Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 623. Step into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the best and worst performing stocks of 2019. And we're also going to talk about where asset allocation has performed the best in terms of what asset classes like large cap, mid cap, small cap, etc. Because sometimes that's a little bit more difficult for people to find. So we're going to talk about that and what's been going on in the markets with some specific stocks and the IPO market, the initial public offering market, those issues that are finally coming to market and going from private companies to becoming publicly traded companies. This article comes to us from marketwatch.com and it was written by Philip Van Dorn. And it says the U.S. stock market had lackluster third quarter performance. And it goes on to show a chart of the broad indexes and how they fared for the third quarter of this year, for three quarters of this year, for total return of three years, five years, 10 years, and 15 years. As you know, I like to look at performance for three to five years when you're looking at putting something in your portfolio. So when you're considering asset allocation, you really wanna look at what has had some good long-term performance, not what has been doing well just this year or heaven forbid, in just the last quarter. So they are providing some short-term information here, but I really want you to look at the three and five year numbers as well as the 10 and 15 year numbers. And it's interesting to note that of the asset classes that they're providing here, the NASDAQ 100, which are the largest tech companies, has actually had the best performance for three years. The total return for three years of the NASDAQ 100 has been 64.3%. Excellent. Next has been the NASDAQ composite, so the full NASDAQ index of tech stocks, 55.6% for a three-year total return. And next best performer would be the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Those are 30 stocks, up 47% over three years. Then the S&P 500, of course, the 500 largest companies in the U.S., up 45.8% over three years. And mid-cap and small caps are about tied at about 30% for three-year total return. One thing on this chart that might surprise you is the asset class that is often the unsung hero are the small cap stocks. Those smaller companies that have the ability to grow fast and become the next largest companies. Over a 15-year period, it actually had a 291% total return versus the S&P 500 at 264%. So nice outperformance over a 15-year period of our small companies versus our very large companies. That's why I'm always harping on you to make sure that you have small caps in your portfolio and not just focus 100% on the S&P 500 or just large companies. The article goes on to say, the financial media and many professional investors agree that we are at a late stage for the bull market and that arguably started at the post-financial crisis bottom on March 9, 2009. One sign of a frothy market is the seemingly new perception that assumptions about valuations for certain startup companies have been fantastic. The WeWork fiasco, leading to the ouster, sort of, of co-founder and CEO Adam Newman, is a telling example. Another is Endeavor's second failure this year to take itself public. Peloton actually made it to the market, but the shares started trading on September 26th at $27, $2 below its initial offering price. Then again, the world remains awash with cash as central banks in the developed world 
continue to be extraordinarily accommodative as they attempt to stave off possible recessions. Bonds with negative yields to maturity total more than $17 trillion, according to Bloomberg. That and the 1.74 yield for 10-year U.S. Treasury notes make the 1.98% dividend yield for the S&P 500 attractive. So basically, it's saying that companies that have come to market have basically failed. WeWork had fraud in its situation. The CEO had to step down. And when initial public offerings aren't coming to market and taking off, that can be a sign that the market's getting tired or toppy or we're late in the bull market cycle, but not always. And with it talking about the bond market, it's basically saying there's a lot of negative yields. In other words, in some countries, bonds are actually not yielding any interest. You have to pay to own the bond and you're not getting positive interest. And on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note, you're getting a 1.74 yield for the 10-year Treasury note, a very meager interest rate for 10 years. And that makes the 1.98% dividend yield for the S&P 500 very attractive. Of course, you are taking market risk when you're investing in the S&P 500, but you have a dividend that is actually doing better than a 10-year treasury note. So things are kind of upside down when you have stocks yielding more than bonds, but the market has been doing very well and you're getting paid for taking some extra risk. So with the market being up 400% from the bottom in 2009, you've been handsomely rewarded for investing in a fluctuating investment like the stock market. The article goes on to say, we cannot predict when this bull market will end. Here's how the 11 sectors of the S&P 500 have performed. And then it gives you things like utilities, real estate, consumer staples, information technology, communication services, financials, industrials, consumer discretionary, materials, healthcare, and energy. These are all sectors within the S&P 500, and it breaks each one down to give you a return for the quarter, a return year to date, a return for three, five, 10, and 15 years in each one of those sectors. What really stands out is that, of course, information technology has been doing extremely well. The best performer for the last 15 years in this tech revolution that we've been experiencing, but also the consumer has been doing the best over a 10 year period and year to date, as well as on a three and five year basis, we are seeing information technology really dominate in terms of being the best sector in the S&P 500. The article goes on to say, with interest rates declining dramatically during the third quarter as the Federal Reserve reversed course, it may not be a surprise to see that the utility sector, with its generally high dividend yields, performed best during the third quarter. But look at the 15-year returns. The utility sector ranks third. And then it goes on to show the Dow 30 and the 30 companies within the Dow 30. It says, on that note, here's how all 30 components of the Dow Jones Industrial Average have performed this year and during the third quarter, along with some information about analysts' opinions of the stocks. All total returns include reinvested dividends. Of course, the best performer in the Dow year to date have been Apple, Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, and Home Depot. Then it goes on to show the year's 10 best performers among the S&P 500. And for total return in 2019, Chipotle, KLA Corp, Lamb Research, and Copart have been the best performers, with Chipotle up 95% this year, quite a great performance year to date. The 10 worst performers in the S&P 500 include a biomed, Macy's, Nectar Therapeutics, and DXC Technology Company. All of them were down around 45% year to date. In the S&P 400 mid-cap index, the best performers were Pilgrim's Pride, Versa Materials, Manhattan Associates, World Fuel Services, and Cypress Semiconductor. 
And the worst performers were Green Dot Corp, Unity Group, Kemmers, Southwestern Energy, and EQT. In the small cap index, the 10 best performers include Diebold Nixdorf, Avon Products, Medicines Company, Solar Edge Technologies, and Sonic Automotive. They were up between 132% and 350% just this year. And in the small cap index, the 10 worst performers included Assertio Therapeutics, Tailored Brands, Whiting Petroleum, Arlo Technologies, and Valeris PLC, all down around 65 or 66% year to date. In the NASDAQ 100, the large technology companies, among the best performers include Mercado Libre, KLA Corp, Lam Research, Western Digital, and Synopsys, up between 63% and 88% this year. And the 10 worst performers, Baidu, Kraft Heinz Company, Mylan, Tesla, and Regeneron, all down between 26 and 35% this year. So on these individual stocks, I'm just giving you some numbers for reference. I'm not suggesting that you're investing in these individual stocks. Of course, you can see the volatility both on the upside and the downside that these individual stocks have. That's why we like to stay in asset classes and use ETFs to represent an entire diversified group of companies within an ETF. So you have your risks spread out, you're reducing your volatility, and you're going to have a mix of good performers, medium performers, and maybe not so good performers, but overall, hopefully, a very good portfolio of companies. So there's some interesting information on here. You might want to reference this article. I will put a link to the article in my show notes so you can take a look. You can also click on these companies and get more information about them if you're curious about what they do and want to know more about their financials. So there are links within this article that you can go and do more research. But just to reiterate, you always want to cover your asset classes. You want to take a long-term investment perspective, three to five years or longer. And you want to make sure that you're not skipping that ultra valuable small cap asset category, which over time can be a really strong performer. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.